If you're interested in learning how to create bar racing charts like the one you see on screen, which was shown at this year's Canva Create event, then stay tuned because that's what we're covering in this video. Okay, today's tutorial is inspired by a question I got on one of my recent tutorials in which I talked about some of the new magic charting features we have in Canva now that we have Canva Sheets. So I got a question on this video right here from Uriel Ramirez Torres, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name okay, but he is asking specifically about the racing bar chart feature that we now have under these magic charts because there was a really cool example that he mentions and that we peeked at in the intro to this video. So we're going to answer this question today and we're going to go over exactly how you create one of these racing bar charts now inside of Canva. Okay, so here I am inside of Canva and I have a blank sheet open on screen. Now, if you're not familiar with how to open a sheet, if you were on the Canva home screen, you would look for this sheet option here. But now in Canva, even if you had a presentation open, now that you can come in here and specifically choose what kind of file you wanna add here. So even if you're in a pres presentation, you could come and add a page that's a sheet. So very easily you can have a sheet here inside of Canva. And this is where you're gonna start to work with tabular data in a spreadsheet format, much like you would with Google Sheets, uh, Microsoft Excel, programs like that. So let's just imagine that we had a data set in here already. So maybe I have something like A, B, C, uh, D, and I'm just gonna put some random numbers in these cells real quick, just to do a really quick example to show you one of the problems you can run into here. So let's just say this was my data set. Now I know this is totally meaningless here, but let's say this was my data set and I had it selected. Then from the actions menu, I can come to this magic charts option. It's gonna give me some uh, ideas of what it thinks I might wanna create, but I can also view all charts and I can come down here and I know I want this bar race chart. So I could choose this, but I, you might get something like this where it says no data to display. And if I come over here and start clicking around, hmm, it's not really clear to me, how do I approach this? Now, so if you run into this, what you need to do is figure out what type of data you need for particular types of charts. And a helpful way to do that is just to start on a blank sheet where you don't even have any data yet. Now, so if I'm on a blank sheet here, uh, I may not be able to bring up magic charts here. If I can, I might not know what to do, but you can also just come over to the charts menu directly. And then since I don't have anything on screen here, if I choose any chart type, so let me find that bar race chart again. So let's see, where was it right there? So if I click on it now, because I didn't have any data, it's automatically gonna populate it with sort of some sample data. And that's very helpful because now suddenly I can get a look at the type of data it wants me to use for this chart type. So here's the data right here. I can use this button to expand this. And if I expand this now, you can see that what it wants for a bar race chart like this is some sort of label column here as the first column. So we can see we have items one through 12. And then across the top here, we have some sort of temporal element. So something having to do with time. Now, I don't think it specifically has to be time, but some sort of total that's gonna go up and change over time. That's what you're gonna want across the sort of uh, columns of your chart. Uh, and so if I scroll across here, we can see that this chart goes from year one all the way up to year 40. Uh, and so it has these different items here. And so we can imagine these might be the countries uh, in that example we saw at Canva Create, or maybe it's Brazil, USA, China, so countries all down here. And then maybe this is a particular year, and then the cumulative number here would be the rising population. Now I know these numbers don't make sense and aren't specifically that, but you get the idea of what uh, they expect here uh, from the data set. And so then if I play this here, let me just resize it up a little bit. We'll see when you play this, it actually starts to go through time here and these total shift and change. And so we can see items moving up and down in the list here, depending on what year we are and where they are in the order of that total number. So now we have an idea of the type of data set we need for this sort of chart. So now that I have an idea of that, I'm gonna go ahead and work with my own data set here. So I'll go to this sheet here and I'm gonna import data. So I'm gonna click on this and then I'm gonna come onto the actions menu and choose this import data option from the bottom. And I'm gonna import my own CSV file. Now I actually compiled this data using ChatGPT. So I got ChatGPT 
to go and look at the pro football reference site. So this is American football. I wanted to look at quarterback passing yards. So I went ahead and got it to compile some data for me. So I'll go ahead and open this now. But of course, keep in mind, this is just a data set I chose to look at. You of course could choose any data set that you thought might be interesting and that might look good in this bar racing chart format. So I have that data here. So I will go ahead and click on it now, replace this current page. And then here is my data here. So I did American football, but you could do anything you wanted. It doesn't have to be a sport. It doesn't have to be data like this. It just has to be anything that sort of fits in this format where you have items along uh, the first column here. And then along the other columns, you have some sort of unit that changes over time. OK, so th there's going to be changes so that those bars are going to shift and change as it scrolls across column, across column, across column. Again, it doesn't have to be years. That's just what I have in my example here. So I went ahead and asked uh, for ChatGPT to sort of find the top uh, 10 quarterbacks in terms of total passing yards. And then I asked them to sort of give me a cumulative passing yard total for that player as we step through their different years of their NFL career. So you have players like Tom Brady that just played 23 years in the NFL. So he's got a lot of columns up here. Other quarterbacks like Jaden Daniels, I put a couple rookies on here and younger players just for fun, just to have something different to look at. So other players here like Patrick Mahomes, he's only had eight NFL years so far. But again, I added a few of these players on here just to go along with these players who are the historic leaders just for interest. So once you have your data set like this, I'm going to select everything in the data set, the whole range. So I'm going to click down here. I'm just going to shift and drag all the way up across the entire range of data. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to find that chart type that I want. Again, I can come up here and choose action uh, magic chart, but I could also now that I have data selected, go over and use this charts option again. So I'll just go down here and find this bar race chart. And now since I've selected the data I want, now suddenly it is applying that bar race chart type to my data here. And I can copy this and paste this in a different sheet if I want. So what I'm going to do is hit Control C and I'll actually just create a presentation slide here. So let's paste it in here just so we have something clean to look at. But this is all linked to that data we just imported and we just selected. So let's just take an initial look at this and then we'll see how we can stylize it and customize it slightly. Make sure it's doing what we want. But if I go ahead and click this now, we can see that, yes, it is working. It's going across the different years. So year one, year two, year 10 of their career, year 15 of their career. And then we can see these numbers shift as it goes on in time. Now, that played pretty quick. I want it to play a little slower. So there are settings in here which we can adjust. And also we can do other things like maybe I wanted a title here. So I could make this a little smaller. I could decide to make it wider like this. So you can still resize and fool around with things like that. You can still use all your traditional Canva features. So let's just bring this up here and type something like cumulative passing yards or something like this. Some sort of title that makes sense. Cumulative passing yards. We'd call it career passing yards since this is their cumulative career total. So something like that, resize it. So again, all these normal things, I'm not going to get too much into formatting. You can use all these other Canva tools as well. But let's see how we can format this as well. So I'm going to click on that. And then you want to go up to this edit button here. So under this edit button here, you have the data source. So uh, if you look at this here, it's choosing sheet one. So that's just the sheet that we're referencing here. If I click here, you can edit that data source. You can open link source, uh, disconnect from source. In other words, if you wanted to just leave this finalized and not have it change, if you updated the source, you could unlink it. But we're going to leave it linked. And if I click on edit data source, you can see here are the numbers. So I could actually come in here, make edits on the fly, click done. But this is all correct. So I'm just going to click done. Again, data synced. So you do all these things to sync, unsync your data. If you want to make changes, if there are corrections to make, if there are updates to make, you can do all that. Uh, and it's telling you where in that sheet, uh, what rows it's using. That's the uh, range that I selected there. And of course, label. What's being labeled down here? Well, we want that to be the player column. You could set it to something else, but I do want it to be the player. Uh, so let's make sure player is selected. And then what years do I want a career? What years do I want to select? So that's all the other columns here. But you could come in here and you could change the range. Now I'll change the range in a minute, but for now I'm going to leave it to that year 1 through 23. So all those years are going to be uh, part of the chart, part of the race. And then do I want a color by option? Sure, let's, let's change the colors of these. So let's have it colored by player. So let's just apply a different color to each player. And you can come up here and change those if you want to customize the colors. You can come up there and do that. You have some other chart spacing and padding options you can, you can adjust up here. But I'm not going to get up into that too much with this example. 
Now, so you have those options, and then the other options you have here are under the Customize tab, and under here is where you could come in and you could turn on and off legends. I don't want the legend of all the player names up there. That just sort of muddles things since I also have them labeled there. So I'm going to turn off that legend. Uh, axis labels, you can turn those on and off. I am going to keep those because they add a lot to the story that's going on here. And then uh, any other things I want to add here. So x-axis, I'm not again, I'm not going to put these on this chart because it's sort of self-explanatory here and there. But you could do other things in here. Uh, and then under settings here, grid lines, uh, let's turn off grid lines, uh, minimum visible bars. Okay, so I don't know if you remember my data source. I actually had 15 players in my data source. Right here, it's only showing the top 10. So you can have it set up so that as it plays this race, it only shows certain a certain number of items, and you have to make it into that top number to be shown on the chart. Well, I actually want to show everything. So I'm going to expand this range out to 15 because I know I had 15 players. So now it's including this Jaden Daniels, even though uh, he was um, only had that one year. And then playback speed here. Again, it was playing pretty fast. So I'm going to lower this down to 0.25, like quarter speed. I wish you could control this even more and make it even slower. But right now, 0.25, that's as uh, slow as you can go. But that still is going to make this more interesting to look at. So again, let's come up here and let's go into present mode. So I'm going to jump over into present mode and we'll look at this example running in full screen. So here we are in full screen. And because I didn't have like a zero euro column or sort of because I didn't have a year zero column, it's showing sort of the first year totals already when I start the chart. The way this works is as it plays here, it's going to go to the year two total next, but it's actually going to show a bunch of numbers here in between. So it's sort of extrapolating between the numbers you have in the columns. So you might have 1,000 in one column and the next entry might be 2,000, but it's going to show a bunch of numbers in between there as it floats from one value to the other, just to make this sort of look more animated and more interesting. But I could go back and add a year zero if I wanted to. I'm not going to worry about that for this example, but we're going to go ahead and play here and step through time. So this is the year one totals and this is going to climb all the way through year 23 because we have at least Tom Brady here Brady here who played 23 years in the NFL so we'll go ahead and start playing this year and we'll see as we go through years now we'll start to see players shift so we have Patrick Mahomes rising up here so he's near the top we're going to see him fall down as we get beyond the number of years he's played and again Tom Brady way down here now but we're going to see these players start to shift as we go through time so in other words, we're seeing Tom Brady start to move up. We see uh, that we have other players dropping down as they're not playing any more years. And eventually Tom Brady is going to climb all the way to the top of this list because we know he played for an incredibly long career. So there he is rising up, rising up. Year 18, year 19, he moves up even farther. Year 20, year 21, he's finally going to pass Drew Brees. And so there we go. Uh, pretty cool animation. Uh, and it sort of tells an interesting story here because you can watch this shift over time. So if we just sort of scrub back through this here, I can't quite see my slider here, but if I could get to my slider, let me let me readjust so we can get to that playhead slider. So I've left presentation mode for a second just because I wasn't quite able to see the very bottom of this, the playhead. So let's sort of drag that up a little bit like that. Now when I go into present mode, which I'm going to do again now, I think we should be able to see... Uh, that playhead slider. Okay, so now I can see it down here at the bottom. So let me just hit play. Uh, but then I can at any point grab this slider and we can really see that like even though there's only one year one value, it's extrapolating numbers there uh, as we move towards year two. And then so then we go to year two and then so we can scrub through slowly here, year four, year five. So we can see by the time we get to year five, we can see that early in his career, Patrick Mahomes is really near the top in terms of passing yards in the first five years of their career. Uh, but then we'll see once we get past year eight, uh, year seven, we can see him start to drop down because of course then he hasn't played those careers, career years yet. So we get other players that have the longer careers start to rise up this list. So anyways, I know this, this example is not going to be perfect for everyone because you might want to choose a data set that you're interested in that's interesting to you. But that's what's cool about this new bar racing chart is that you really can come in here think creatively figure out what sort of data set you want to use as long as it has some sort of numbers that change over time related to different items then you can use this bar racing chart and you can get some really 
cool results. So let's just go over another quick example to review this process. So once again, I had ChatGPT help me compile some data. So it just did uh, streaming services, uh, subscribers by millions. So we have Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO Max. Uh, 2015 to 2023. So again, we need some different items. We need some sort of number that's going to change over time or across different uh, measurements here. And so we have that here with this data. So I would just select all this data. Again, remember, you're going to go to charts. You're going to find that racing bar chart option. So here we go, bar race, and we have something like this. And then I copied this and pasted it to a different presentation page. Uh, we added in a title here. I did some customization here. And so we can play this now and we can see how this tells the story of how Netflix and Amazon sort of have the big share of the market. But then as we go through years here, we can see how Disney really starts to take off. Hulu and HBO Max also growing. So it tells a better, more visual story than just looking at the numbers in a table like this. So this is the really the great thing about these sort of bar race charts is it just makes a very interesting visual. So now suddenly you're having your data tell a story in a more interesting way. Now, of course, I could bring some logos in here and have them to the left if I wanted to. It would be nice if you could take this label and make that sort of a graphic element, but at least at this point in time, that's a feature you don't have, but you can do things like coming in here. And so if we wanted to use a red color for that Netflix, we could come in here and we could change that to more of a brand color like that. So you can make some changes, but I'd like to see even more options in here in the future. Again, like this label here at the bottom, I haven't really found a way to move that 2015 around. Don't think I'm missing that, uh, but maybe that's an improvement they're gonna make. So there are improvements that can be made, but I really think these racing bar charts in Canva, really a cool type of chart if you have appropriate data that's gonna fit into this uh, story over time where you have different items numbers that are going to change. So try this out. Let me know what you think. If you have some cool results and you want to share something, you can share a uh, Canva file, a view only Canva file or whatever you want. Paste the link down in the comments below. We'd love to take a look at what you create. And as always, if you like tutorials like this, you can like and subscribe to this channel. And down below in the first pinned comment, if you visit that free resources page, I have a lot of free resources dedicated to Canva. You can download whatever you like if you just sign up for my free Canva newsletter where I send out updates related related to Canva and things related to Canva. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past.